So welcome. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. If you're new to live stream um, and you're looking for links when I talk about links, there's a little section um, on the live stream screen where the links are posted. So you can check there for the links. And then also Karen or Katie and Katie uh, will be posting live stream links that I'm talking about during class today on our Facebook pages, both on the Totally um, Tiffany page and the Get Organized Challenge group page. If you are not a member of the Get Organized Challenge group and you are trying to get your supplies organized, it's a great group, super fun, helpful, kind, motivating uh, crafters. So I would totally join that group. And that way, if you have questions in the middle of the night, there's 16,000 people in that group, a little more actually. So if you're trying to get a question answered and it's the middle of the night here, um, somebody in the group will probably pop in and help you out. So welcome to Sticker Organization 101. And this is just a really basic class on how to get your stickers organized. You're gonna need to make a few decisions up front. Um, what, how are you gonna sort? What kind of tools are you gonna sort into? And then how are you gonna store your supplies? So well, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that as we go through the process here um, and show you all the different things. The first thing that you're gonna need to do is what we call a themes and sentiments list. So this is a list of all of the things that you craft about, whether you're a mixed media artist, a scrapbooker, a card maker, stamper, it doesn't matter. Um, you craft about certain things and within your sticker collection, you are gonna have the um, stickers that match those themes and sentiments. So if you haven't done a themes and sentiments list from another class, you're gonna wanna do that first. Now, one of the links that Karen is putting up um, is going to take you to a page in the website that says printables and downloads or something like that. And then at the bottom of that page, there's a, a printable of this themes and sentiments list. So if you're looking for kind of a jumping off point, somewhere to give you ideas, you can start here. And then, of course, the things you craft about are probably very different. Well, not very, but there probably are some differences between what we're crafting about, so you're gonna to wanna to change up the list, but it'll give you some good ideas. So these are things like beach, baby, birthday, camping. Uh, if you're a card maker, that's where the sentiments come in. Congratulations, bon, bon voyage, happy birthday, all of those kind of things. So this list is gonna be your first step. That's how you're gonna sort, okay? Once you make your list, your sorting list, then you have to decide how you're gonna actually go through the process. Are you going to create sorting templates that match your list, right? So, uh, well, let me, let me backtrack for a moment because I just jumped in assuming that you already know about the four section system. But if you're brand new, if this is the first class that you've joined me for, um, the basis of everything that we do here is based on organizing your supplies in a way that it's really easy for your brain to find them, right? A mental path to be able to find your stuff, and we call it the four section system. And that means grouping your supplies, whatever they may be, into four major categories, alphabets, numbers, punctuation marks, that's category one, themes and sentiments, A to Z, that's what you're gonna make the list for. Um, the calendar year, January to December, that's your holiday and seasons. And then the last section is the rainbow. And again, the same printable page, there's a printable on there that um, goes over the whole four section system and has links to some videos and that type of thing as well. So if you've never been on board for the four section system lecture, you're gonna wanna take a few minutes and do that um, before you get started, because it'll really help in the process. Okay, so now how are you gonna sort? You have two choices. You can pile or file, right? So if you're gonna pile, um, then you're gonna need something like this. This is just 12 by 18 um, paper from the dollar store, from the kids craft uh, area in the dollar store. I drew a line down it right here. So now this side is 12 by 12, and then I, but I can still read what all my themes are, right? So if you're piling, you're gonna make what we call sorting templates that list your themes and sentiments down the side and you can do them. So this one is A, B, and C. You don't have to have one for each letter of the alphabet. In fact, I would recommend that you don't. When I, when I first did this, I made one of these for every letter of the alphabet. Well, there were things like O and 
I think I was smart enough to put X, Y, Z together, but like the letter O, I didn't have anything that was going to go in there. So it was something that I made by mistake, which is why I encourage you to now make your themes and sentiments list first and then use your themes and sentiments list to create your sorting templates if you're going to pile instead of file, right? If you're going to file, you will need something that is more like this, which is what I'm going to use today just because um, it's very consolidated. This is our Guy Stamp and Supply Organizer. Also works great for um, our Kiwi Lane pockets, right? If you want to store your Kiwi Lane in there. But if you want to create a sorting file, um, I'm not sure that you would want to keep your um, stickers in this or not. Maybe you could. Um, but it's a, I don't, I, actually, I don't see why not, depending on what size they are. This isn't good for 12 by 12 stickers. So if you have tons of 12 by 12 stickers, you're probably going to just want to use this as a sorter and then move them into one of the other options that we'll see later in the class. So if you're going to file, you need some sort of dividers. And these, again, are matched up with the alphabets and numbers, themes and sentiments, A to Z, and then the calendar year, right? So what I'm going to do is sort through my pile of stickers. Now, if I was using sorting templates instead of a file, if I was piling instead of filing, I would spread them out and I would sort right onto them, right? So this, the piling system takes up quite a bit more space while you're in the process, but you can also sort a lot more things in, in one process. All right. So this process of sorting your stickers is really simple. You're just going to go through your pile. So this is a travel sticker. It's going to go under T for travel. Whoop. If I don't knock everything over here, maybe I should turn it this way a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. T for travel. These are Valentine's Day stickers, right? So they're going to go in the, technically Valentine's Day is a winter holiday, but I think of Valentine's Day as spring, right? So it's really important, and one of the things that we talk about when we're organizing is what, where is your brain going to look for that particular thing, right? What is important to you? Alphabets and numbers, so I'm just going to go through. I'm going to talk as I'm sorting. Um, where are you going to find it? Are you going to look for Valentine's Day in spring, or are you going to look for Valentine's Day in winter where it technically is, right? So now I'm going through here. Oh, there's some more Valentine's stickers. Um, as I'm going through here and putting these in the box, I'm kind of doing a pre-sort by size also. Um, this is winter, that's Christmas, this is fall, that's Thanksgiving. So I'm putting the smaller stickers toward the front and the larger stickers toward the back. Got some cardstock Christmas stickers here. Right? Travel stickers, these are all kind of the same size. We'll go there. Now, as I'm going through, if I had things that matched up, I would look to put those things together as well. So if I have another set of stickers that matches this, or if I come across some more stickers that are like this for Japan, I'm going to try and group those together, right? Alphabets, so I've got smaller ones in the front, bigger alphabets kind of going to the back. This is a cardstock travel sticker, right? And one of the things that I talk about in other classes is keeping things together that you use together. And you want to do that here as well as much as possible. So depending on the type of organizer you're going to choose to store your things, um, Sometimes I can talk and work to, at the same time, and sometimes I can't. Sports, football. So depending on the type of organizer that you're going to choose to use for your things is going to dictate how much of that you can do, keep things together, you use together. So these are all Disney. And we'll see some examples of how to do that as well. Animals. Disney. So one of the nice things about filing instead of piling is that you can see what a small amount of space that I've used here. And 
if I had to stop my organizing project, it would be easy to clean up this little bit of stuff and set it aside. So one of the things that happens when we do organizing is we'll start on a project and a lot of times when you're organizing things, things get worse before they get better, right? So you, you make kind of a mess dragging everything out of your closets or, or whatever, you're, you know, whatever it is that you're working on. Um, and then if something interrupts you, you end up with this big mess and it's because you got interrupted. Maybe you forgot you were having company over for dinner. Maybe you got a phone call from your kid's school that said, hey, you know, Susie has a fever. You need to come and pick her up. Any number of things can happen that distract you or, or, or pull you away from what you thought you were going to get done in a day. When you're doing an organization project and you have that big mess, maybe it's a closet even that's all pulled out and then you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot I'm having dinner, people over for dinner tonight. I don't have time to do this. And you just shove everything back in the closet. Well, what happens in your brain is your brain doesn't remember that you um, just shoved everything back in the closet because you were interrupted. Your brain looks at that closet the next time and it says, that, that didn't work. Your idea didn't work. You need to try something new. So whenever you're doing a project where there's a potential of getting interrupted um, or you do get interrupted, you need to make sure that you are able to put things away so that you can preserve the work you've done, which is a great thing about using a file system. If you join us for paper last week, I talked a little bit about that last week too. If you're doing a file system, I could just take all these that were left now, if I got interrupted, if I needed this table space, and I could just stuff them all in the very front of my file box, right? And I wouldn't lose any of the work that I've already done. It's easy to pull them back out and finish them up, right? So keep that in mind as you're working. You don't want your brain to shut down on you. All right. So look, I just stuffed all those in there. But now I can pull them back out and finish up what I'm doing. And then we'll talk about. Um, so if you have more than one category behind a letter, I'm going to talk about those separately, you could use um, sticky notes to help segment. So behind B right now, I've got birthday. And these are baby things, right? So I know I'm going to have a category called baby. So I could just take a sticky note at this point and add it to that. Grab a Sharpie. Where is my black Sharpie? There it is. Baby. Right? So now I know I've got two categories in there. Baby. And I'm going to go ahead and make another sticker, another uh, sticky note that says birthday. You can do this with any type of sticky notes. Um, these are our, these are what we, call, what we call shut your flap tabs. We have two different sizes of them. They're plastic. And the reason I like plastic sticky notes, and you can buy ours or you can get them at Office Depot, but the reason I like plastic sticky notes is because they bend, but they don't fold. So if I was put, if I was creating something See if I have a paper sticky note in here. I know where I have one. Right here. So if I was do, doing the same thing and I wrote birthday on here and, I, and it got folded, it's not going to pop back up, right? With this one, it's almost impossible to fold and it's going to, and it's going to pop up every time. So that's the beauty of plastic stickies over paper stickies, but you can use either one. Um, okay, so birthday, I'm going to go ahead and tag that birthday. And now, as I'm finishing sorting, I can do that next, like, l level or layer of sorting as I put more birthday stuff or more baby things in. Um, I know I'm already kind of pre-sorted. So instead of just having all of my um, baby things together mixed in with birthday, I've got them all kind of pre-sorted birthday and baby separately. And then again, whoop, I'm putting my travel stuff in the sports section. Again, I'm just grouping things as I sort by size. So here's another set of stickers from Japan, and I'm going to put those together with the stickers I already have. Here's another Japan sticker, right? So I want to keep things together. I'm going to use together. If I'm working on a Japan project, um, I want to be able to see everything that I've got for Japan in one place, and that's going to keep all those things together. So that's one of the questions that I regularly get asked. Would you have a section then just for Japan? No. I would have Japan in my travel section because there are a bunch of other things that I might use 
for my trip to Japan, right? Maybe I'm going to use uh, an airplane. Maybe I'm going to use a suitcase. Those are all going to be in travel. I want to see all those things while I'm working on um, the Japan uh, pages. I actually haven't been to Japan, but my son went in high school. That's why I have that stuff. So at some point, I'm going to get that scrapbooking done. And then again, uh, tiny Christmas stickers, bling stickers. So it doesn't really matter what your stickers are made of, right? These are little three-dimensional birthday hat stickers. I'm gonna pop in there. Now, what I have here is also something that you keep together, use together, right? I have these adorable Stephanie Bernard birthday embellishment stickers, and I want to keep them together, but I don't want, uh, I want to have the least amount of packaging possible in my storage system, right? Because they just take up space. So if you've got just flat stickers like these, right, they don't need to be protected at all because they're just flat. They're not going to get hung up on things. But if you have stickers like these, which are three-dimensional, they're going to get hung up on things, right? If I just put, oops. if I just took this piece of acetate and stuffed it in the birthday section, it would probably get hung up just getting stuffed in there. So I want to keep it protected. And, and if I was on a design team, I might also want to know um, who the designer is on that product project, on that product, right? Or who the brand is, sorry, on that project. So what I'm going to do in order to solve both of those dilemmas is I am going to put these stickers back in the package that they came in and I'm going to slide the acetate all the way to the end right and now I'm just going to cut off the packaging okay so now they're in there I know the brand I have the packaging for the brand if I'm on a design team but the stickers are protected they're not going to get hung up on anything sliding past other things right so you could put them in right side up you that's your thing. If you don't need to keep the, the brand, if you're not worried about knowing the brand, then you, you could get rid of the brand piece and that would just be that much less weight, that much less thickness that's in whatever storage tool you're using. But you definitely want to keep your 3D stickers protected. I don't know if you all are familiar with Stephanie Bernard at Stamps of Life, but I love Stephanie. She is She's my new bestie in the crafting world. We have so much fun together, and we are working on a really cool new project. It's going to come out in October. Okay, so anyway, now I can. Now those are protected, but they're easy access because I cut the package, right? I don't have to open it up. I could pull the uh, label out if I want to, um, if I don't want to keep that much thickness in there. And I'm going to put these in the birthday section, and I'm going to put these in. Well, and these don't need. I could take these all the way out of the package because these are flat, right? Right. They're not they're they're not layered. I guess that those are layered. These are dimensional, but they're not layered, so they're not going to get hung up on things. So you can either leave things in the package, but cut the package open so they're easy to get to, um, or you can take them out of the package. So get those in there. Right. So if they're like this and you don't need the top of the package, you don't or this one actually has the brand so you can see it on both sides. If you want to keep it in there, you can just whack that off, right? And now you've got this nice clear pocket that your stickers are stuck are in, so you're not worried about destroying them in the process, but you've eliminated some of the weight and some of the thickness. Boom, into birthday. Okay, so now the, I've done my filing, and now I need to organize and store these. So. Um, I've got everything organized here, and now I just need to choose which way, how I'm going to store my stickers. If you're familiar with me at all, you know I'm just going to tell you the best possible way to store your stickers is in a scrap rack. Okay, I know there's some bias there, just bear with me. If it's not, if you don't have a scrap rack, then a sticker binder is the next best way because it's a very similar process of. It's a very similar process of storage. Here's a couple of other options. This is a 12 by 12 fab file. 
inside our fab files, you get file pockets. This one, I think, is loaded up with football stuff. But if you wanted to keep your supplies by theme, you could keep them in something like a fab file. So up, ups and downs of the fab file for sticker storage. This is 12 by 12, which is great if you have 12 by 12 sheets of stickers. But if you have short sheets of stickers, they're going to either drop to the bottom of the box or drop to the bottom of the pocket. If you don't use a 12 by 12 box, then you're, say, you, if you're just going to use like a 6 by 12 box, then you're not going to be able to keep your, all your stickers together um, because, just because of the size limits, right? So you could use a fab file or, um, or something similar to keep your stickers in by size. Um, I think it's better if you can keep whole collections together. So like this is all football. So all the football stuff is in one place, right? So keep things together you use together. That's a mantra you've heard from me more often than not. This is a paper handler. And you've, you've seen this before. The handles pull up on it. If you're trying to keep sticker collections together, so this, these are a bunch of stickers from Mexico. I've got small pockets on the front. I've got bigger pockets, a big 12 by 12 pocket on the back. So you can keep a collection of stickers together by theme or a whole theme or a couple of, I don't know, depends how many you have, I guess. You could just do them by theme, like this might be all travel. And then in which case, those are going to go into your paper handler and they've got a little tab on the side, right? So you can file through, flip through them that way as well. When we talk about binders, which I think is definitely the best way to go. So if you're unfamiliar with the scrap rack, this is a scrap rack. So it's like having a giant binder right on the front of you where you can just flip through and see all of your supplies, right? If you don't, if you don't have a scrap rack, you can just use, this is a 12 by 12 binder, right? So this one's canvas. It has tool pockets on the inside. It's our craft binder. Um, and it'll hold up to three scrap rack sections inside it, depending how, how big they are. Well, here, I'll open it and show you what the inside's like. So the advantage to the craft binder over our plastic binder, or a plastic binder, is that on the inside, you've got, you've got some basic tool storage, so pens, cylindrical tools, tool pockets. You've got your three ring section here and this is just in there with Velcro, right? That's how you can put three in because they move around. That's the shoulder strap. So the craft binder is great if you, especially if you like to go to crops and classes, right? It's, e it's easy to carry a bunch of stuff with you in one fell swoop with the craft binder. The last choice is what we call just, this is just our plastic 12 by 12 craft supply binder, right? 12 by 12 three ring binder, super simple. I'm actually going to kind of use this to demo, so I'll leave it out right now. So you decide whatever tool you're going to use, scrap rack, binder, boxes, and then you can start sorting into those tools. So when we talk about doing a binder, you're going to need some pocket pages and dividers. So the next thing I did was I took my set of dividers and I labeled them with major categories, right? Alphabets and numbers, these are my themes and sentiments, and then the calendar year. And pop those in my binder. And that's going to be my, the first section of sorting here. Now, if you already are using a scrap rack, of course, you are going to... Um, you're just going to add to your scrap rack. So you might have empty pockets in a particular section. So this section is birthday. I've got room in the pockets. I may just go to my birthday section here, pull out some birthday things, and add them into the pockets where I have open sections. These are going to fit better in. Well, they might fit in here. No, these are going to fit better in the fab floor. So I would have to start a new pocket for these because they need to go in a bigger pocket than I have in my birthday section, in which case I would grab this. If you use a scrap rack, you know the pages are super slippery and they all kind of look the same when they're all stacked up. I just have an extra spinder and I used, again, just sticky notes um, and labeled which pockets those are. So I know that in this situation, I want to use a Fab Four 
which is six by uh, six by six pocket. So I'm just going to go to that tab, pull that out. Now with the scrap rack, I'm just going to add this to my scrap rack by pulling this spinder off the base, putting my page in. I'm going to go back one because I like to have my smaller pockets on the front and then bigger pockets in the back. I'm going to put this page in and then I'm going to add my adorable Stephanie Bernard birthday embellishments. Pull the little flap over them so they stay in the pockets where they belong. I also have these little small party hats and those are going to fit perfectly in this little page right here. So I'm going to slide those into that pocket. And what else do I have in birthday? I just have a 12 by 12 sticker. So again, I'm going to go back here to where I have a larger pocket and I'm going to add this 12 by 12 sticker into this larger pocket. So what I did here, I, I just put the 12 by 12 sticker into it or the six by 12 sticker into the 12 by 12 pocket with this paper, right? If I had more, six by 12 birthday stickers, I would probably use a double X or, or a two pocket page and fill them in that way, which you're gonna see when we talk about um, alphabets and numbers. So if you are using a scrap rack, you're just gonna integrate those. Once they're sorted, you're just gonna go through your scrap rack and add them into the right section, okay? So, and then you put your, your spinder back on the base and you're ready to go. Now, one of the things about whether you're using a binder, the big craft binder or the scrap rack, one of the things that um, is kind of hard to get your brain around are the actual page designs because like I said, they're all clear, right? So when you go to our website, um, there's line drawings of what each of them look like, but there are also, and again, this is in the um, link that Karen's going to post for you, there's also a page where you can download printables like this that tell you the name of the page, give you a little drawing of what it looks like, and then different things that fit in it. So if you find kind of, that it's kind of challenging to choose your pages, print these off, put them in the front of your scrap rack or in the front of your binder, and then when you have new products and you need to um, get more pages, you'll be able to flip through there and choose the right pages for the products that you have. So these are all, there's one of these for every product that we have. And they also have not only the sizes, dimensions, what they fit, but there's also some tips and tricks in there for different things that you might store on there. So they're pretty helpful information. Three hole punch it and throw it in your binder and you'll be good to go. All right, so uh, next up I have alphabets and numbers. And looking at this, I can tell, right? I have my smaller ones together and then my larger ones together and I'm going to need to store those. I'm going to need a Fantastic Five. So this is a five pocket page. Four of the five pockets. Four of the five pockets are five by seven and then there's just this tiny cute little pocket right in the middle right there that you can barely fit anything in but it is cute. But the five by seven dimension of these is what I want. And then I'm also, I know, going to need one of those long two, two pocket pages. Another question that I get asked regularly is, um, should you put empty pages on your scrap rack or in your binder, like mixed into your sections? And, um, sorry about that. Uh, mixed into your sections and I I don't do that sometimes I'll leave an empty page in because it's I'm too lazy to take it out of the scrap rack but it's so unpredictable what's gonna fit where that I just I just don't do it all right next up we've got alphabet stickers right so with alphabet stickers one of the important things in my mind is how you store them do you store them by color no store them by size right one of the tips for organizing is thinking about how you actually use something. And in this case, how you use these stickers, whether you're a card maker or a scrapbooker or mixed media, whatever you're doing, you're going to choose alphabet stickers not based first by color, but based first by size. So if you were trying to, if you were trying to write happy birthday in, uh, this, in a one-inch space, 
you're not going to be able to do that with stickers this size, right? You're going to need smaller stickers. So if you think, okay, I'm, I'm going to store these by color, now you're going to have these and these stored together, right? And if you're going to say, okay, I want to write happy birthday in red, well, let's, let's use 4th of July. It's my favorite example. Um, I'm going to write 4th of July in red. So when you go to all your red alphabet stickers that are together, um, and you say, oh, I love this, but I don't have J's. Okay, maybe I could, maybe I also have this in blue. And then you'd have to flip around and find out if you had it in blue. And then you're like, okay, yeah, I have it in blue and, and there's J's, but I don't have uh, a number four for, to write forth. Um, what am I gonna do? What other colors can I use? And you're gonna end up flipping through colors as opposed to if all of these are together by size, you can see all of them and go, okay, I can spell out 4th of July in red and blue. Okay, I have a four in black, so it's ready to go. And you can see all of them together. So when it comes to alphabets, you use them by size, you choose them by size because you're working within a finite amount of space, whether that's on the front of a card or across the front of a scrapbook page, whatever it is, it's finite space. And so the, what you can fit in there is gonna be how you're gonna choose first and then color second. So these fit, this is the five by seven page. So I'm just gonna tuck them all in. And now I have the first page together of my alphabets and numbers section. I'm gonna open my binder and I'm gonna put that in. Um, oh, and I've got my little small gold stickers. Those are going to fit in this page as well, and I'm just going to put them on the back side, right, of the black stickers. So now I can see everything. Sorry, you probably can't see it. I can see everything on the front, but because the pages are clear, I want to put things in facing both directions so when I turn the page, I'm going to see the most possible choices that I've got. Next, I'm going to do my... Um, six by 12 stickers and I've got cardstock stickers this is like a double sheet of cardstock stickers and I've got this is a giant right but it all folds up so it's gonna go in and I'm just gonna put these in again I'm gonna use just one pocket and I'm gonna put all those stickers in the one pocket now these are red and sparkly and the other ones were green and sparkly so I'm going to put those in backwards. Now, these are all generic stickers, right? Be able to see both sides when I flip the page. But if I had specific birthday stickers that either matched a birth, uh, specific alphabet stickers that matched a kit like birthday, that they were all decorated birthday stickers matching that kit, then I'm going to store those alphabet stickers not in the alphabet section, but I'm going to store them with the rest of the, that kit, that birthday kit, right? Keep things together you use together. That's the first rule of organization. Once I use up the pages and sticker, paper and stickers and the other pieces of that birthday kit, I might just have a few alphabet stickers left. At that point, I would move the stickers into the alphabet section once the things I'm going to use them with are gone as well. Okay, so first section, alphabets and numbers. My second section is themes and sentiments A to Z. So now I'm going to work through each of these sections that I've organized. I'll put this in the back for now. And I've kind of, as I talked about, grouped my stickers together by size. So I've got small stickers and then I've got border stickers and I've got big stickers, right? Now, one of, the thing, one of the reasons for grouping your stickers together by size is that you don't want to use a ton of different pages, right? So these would fit, these would fit in the triple play page, right? They're the right size for the triple play, play. But that would give me a triple play page for these and a 12 by 6 page for these. And then I've got these t little tiny puppy stickers also. They're actually not as tiny, they're folded in half, right? So, wh what are my options? I'm going to look at this, and if you have your little printouts, where did I put that? Of your scrap rack pages, then you can look at the little printout and determine which pocket's going to be the best. So, even though this is 6 by 12, and it would fit great in that big double pocket that I put the... Um, 
that I put the alphabet stickers in. I'm going to choose a triple play. Oh, it's my last one. I'm going to take this little sticky note off and I'm going to put it on the front here. That's my little reminder that I'm out of triple play pocket. So the next time I'm on the website, I'm going to order those. Or I'm just going to ask one of the warehouse guys to bring me some. One or the other. All right, so this sticker is actually too big for this pocket, but that's okay because you can just leave it sticking out of the top of the pocket because it's flat, right? Now I can put these stickers in the middle pocket because they're a little bit taller, and I can put this long felt sticker in the top pocket because it's skinny, and if I put it in the middle pocket, I wouldn't see it anymore. And I can take my puppy stickers and I can put them in either forward, right, and they're going to be under the flap, or I could turn them around backwards so I could see them on the other side if the pockets were full. Now, one of the nice things about doing a binder storage, right, um, is that you can put a lot of things together in a pocket. You don't have to just put one thing per pocket. So you could put three, four, five things depending on how big they are and how thick they are in each pocket. So now this is my animal category, right? I used major um, labels, sorry, here, right, A through C. Now I can take a sticky note if I want to do a little bit more segmenting and now I have all these animals under A for animals. Um, some of you may have zoo animals, farm animals, pets, wild animals. Um, you know, sea animals, whatever it is, right? So it's whatever, however your brain thinks. My suggestion to you though is to put all your animals together. So behind the A tab you would have animals and then you would have a tab for zoo animals, farm animals, pets, right? Some of us um, might have our pets in the family section with our children, right? Depending on who you are. But it's important how you think about that. Right? Are you, do you think of your pets as animals or do you think of them as family members? Where are you going to look for that, those stickers or that, that paper or whatever you want? Right? So I can add a tab, animals, and then I can go through the next section now, which is going to be Disney. And I'm going to just work through my box here, sorting each section of stickers by category into my pages. And then I'm going to end up with all of my stickers in one nice, neat binder. Right? So when I need stickers or I'm going somewhere, I can grab that binder or maybe you're going to use the big craft binder off the shelf and take it with me or off the shelf and bring it to my workspace. So one of the things that I've been talking a lot about lately is um, how you choose your supplies, how you choose what you're going to use, right? So depending on how you, <laughs> excuse me, how you craft, when you craft, where you craft, who you craft with, that's how you want to make your decision about choosing storage solutions, right? If you always travel, always. Did I mention that where I got these dividers? Did I start by talking about that? I don't think I did. If you're looking at my divider box here and saying, where did you get those dividers that fit so nicely into your die stamp and supply organizer? The <laughs> these are our paper storage box dividers and I just cut them cut the bottom off, right? So this is, I cut it to seven inches right here. My, the, my longest sticker is usually six inches or my most common sticker is six inches. So um, these aren't something new and different. These are just our um, paper storage box dividers that I cut the tab off, cut the bottom off so that they would fit in my box. It'd be nice and easy to sort into the box. Okay, talking about how to choose your tools. If you always scrap at home, something like this is great because it's right out in front of you. It's open, it's accessible. If you have a craft room, you've got it on the shelf, you've got it on your workspace, right? Easy to find, easy to see, easy to use. Scrap rack is ideal because you have the binder functionality, but you can pull this binders off that you're going to work with if you're going to go to an event, throw them into the craft binder and take them to the event with you. So you don't spend a bunch of time gathering things together and then 
having to sort them out at the event and then sort them out again when you get home. You're going to take them exactly as they're organized, right? So if you're somebody who works at home and has space, Scrap Rack is perfect. If you also like to travel, it's a double bonus because you can take it with you to crops and classes. If you're somebody who has to store your supplies away from where you work, so maybe you have a closet where you keep all your crafting supplies and then you actually scrapbook at the dining room table, that's when something like the 12 by 12 craft binder or the big canvas craft binder are gonna be perfect for you because you can throw it on that shelf in the closet and then you can bring it out to your workspace, to your table, work with it, zip it up, set it aside, put it away, it makes it really easy. So really think about before you're choosing what tools you're gonna to organize in, how do I craft, where do I craft, when do I craft, who do I craft with, right? Do you have tons of space or are you always sharing space because you're at a crop? And all those things are gonna kinda of dictate which are the best tools for um, organizing stickers and everything, actually. All right, so let's talk about a couple of tips and tricks. Keep things together you use together, right? This collection of stickers, I have two that are similar. One is Hawaii and one is Las Vegas. So I've got the Hawaii stickers here and the Las Vegas stickers here. And I've actually got some other Las Vegas stickers in there. Um, and then on the back side, I, so this, this page has two six by 12 pockets on the front. And then it has one big 12 by 12 pocket on the back. So both of these, these collections have 12 by 12 stickers as well. This one also has the roulette wheel. Is that what that is? Yeah, roulette wheel. I'm not, a, I'm not that great of a gambler. So, okay. So now I can have these big stickers right in with my small stickers and they're grouped, keep things together, you use together, right? So I'm going to take this whole section and it's going to go right into my T for travel section, I'm gonna go to T. I'm gonna put this under my travel tab. And now I've got it organized in travel, but I also have it organized by destination, right? So I'm keeping things together, I use together, big category, um, travel, and then subdividing smaller categories behind that. If you, so with this, pro, this collection, I have this great big 12 by 12 sticker, and I have a few sheets of paper, and then I have this small dimensional sticker, right? Well, just throw the smaller things into the big pocket if you only have one page worth of stuff because then you're only using one page but you're keeping everything together, right? If I had 10 stickers that fit with this collection, I would probably also use a five by seven, the Fantastic Five page and separate out those stickers so I can see them a little better, but I don't. One big 12 by 12 sticker, one small sticker and a couple of sheets of paper. So again, keeping things together, you use together. This is Monkeys, which is the nickname for my two sons, London and Max. So that's going to go in F for family, right? Is it upside down? What am I doing here? So that's going to go in my section F for family. All right, next tip. If you have something like this, which is giant alphabet stickers, Right? I put all the stickers in, and when I first did this, I did A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right, in order. But then it was hard to see everything that I had. So my advice to you is, if you're storing something big, like these, right, now using the Traders 12 page, I can see 24 alphabet letters, and they run across, all the way across, so I can see them, right? A, B, C, D, E, right? Right across. I can see them all in a row. I'm not zigzagging back and forth. It just makes a little more sense to my brain. And then I put all the numbers um, together on the front and then the weird end of the alphabet. So these are alphabet stickers. So I'm going to go to my alphabet section and I'm going to drop them into the alphabets. One other thing is we have a tendency to separate things by what we think we're going to use them for. So if these were, if these big stickers were purchased for my son, now look how nice that is, you can see all the letters at one fell swoop. If these were, if these stickers were purchased so that my son could create a student council poster, um, which is why I bought them, and I put them in the office and I stuck them on a shelf and 
then Max used them and then you put them back there, then they would never be seen again and we would never use them, right? So go ahead and put everything together, any kind of art supply, anything that you might use together into your scrap rack or into your binder. You can always send your kid to your alphabet binder and say, yeah, we have those alphabet stickers. They're in the alphabet sticker binder, right? So the more stuff you keep together, the more likely it is that you're gonna be able to use it together. All right. So the last thing is um, adding those labels, right? So after you get all of your stickers sorted into your pocket pages, into the boxes, into your scrap rack, then you're going to finalize that by adding those labels. I've been kind of doing it as I'm talking, right? So here I added uh, the Hawaii labels. I would add a major category label for travel if I, had gener if I have my generic travel page here and then the category labels behind, right? So that's your last step in the process of getting those stickers organized is adding some more subdivision categories, some more label categories, because when we sorted, we did only just a major categories that way. I think that wraps it up for today, unless anybody has questions, in which case Karen should be bringing them upstairs. Usually I try to give her a little bit more warning than, um, than I just did so that she knows if there's questions to go ahead and bring them upstairs. I will share with you briefly while we wait. Um, we're, we've got a new, a new product coming out end of this week. So if you're not on our email list, you want to pop onto our email list so you can see what's new. Oh, and then end of this week, that's kind of today because it's Thursday. I just don't have it set up or I would be showing it to you today, but you're going to see it tomorrow or Saturday, I hope. So keep your eyes and ears on Facebook and or Instagram or wherever you like to get your information or on our email list and you'll be able to see that new product. All right, I think that wraps it up for this class, Sticker Organization 101. Remember, when you're choosing the tools that you're going to use to organize your stickers, you want to think about where you're using them, how you're using them, who you're using them with. Do they always stay in one place? Do you travel with them? So as you make those choices, uh, be sure you're keeping those things in mind so that you'll get the right tools for the way that you craft. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I hope you'll come back and visit me another time. Have a great rest of your day.